Hi, child of God, you are welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. All the content that we create on this channel are purely Christian content, and I encourage you, if you're a believer, subscribe to this channel. Every woman has four levels of development. There's the level of a girl. When you are a girl, your priority is your looks. That's what puberty taught them. So you come to the mirror, you discover you have some peculiarities. And so you see them, they want to show people. They are all over the place because they are girls. You know the problem of many women, they never grow from girls. So the lady is 35, she's still a girl. That's why you see ladies naked in society. Because all the value they have is their body. They so clothed, their whole chest is exposed. Their whole legs are exposed because they are still girls. A girl has her powers in her body. But you must grow from the level of a girl to become a lady. A lady's strength is not her body, it's her mind. Because she has something to add to society. But there are many empty-headed girls in society moving around with makeups, eyelashes, mascara, foundation, naked, and have nothing to offer society. You meet them every time, they think it's all about their body. And the zenith of their value is their body. And so they, because that's all they have to offer, if they want to make hair, somebody sleeps with them. If they want to buy a phone, somebody sleeps with them. Because they have nothing to offer. And so they throw their body all over the place and they think life begins and ends with looks. But when you grow from a gear, you become a lady, your strength is your mind. If somebody talks to you, you engage the person mentally first. You can't just walk up. No doubt can just walk up and approach such a person. When you greet her, what's your name? I'm interested in you. Where are you going to? If you can't explain your vision and your future for her, you can't even sit with her on the same table. That's a lady. And society is in dire need of ladies. Because there is a gap that cannot be filled in society until ladies emerge. That's why God created them as helpers. That means they are the ones who bring succor and stability to civilization. Any civilization that has no ladies will be a civilization of violence. In the Arab world today, the reason why you find so much violence is because they don't allow ladies to play their part. Any society that is only a man's society is a violent society. Because when men are boys, they believe in strength. So go to many nations where women have no voices. You see terrorism leading. Go to religions where women have no voices. You see terrorism leading. Because the balance is not there. So you must grow from a girl to a lady. But you still don't stop there. When you become a lady, you now grow to a wife. You are not a wife because you have been married. You are a wife to be found. They say, he who finds a wife, you don't find ladies. You don't find girls, you find wives. That's why there are many ladies in society, but they are not having husbands. I know some of them, the devil is fighting them and God will help them. But there are many ladies who are ladies. They are walking, dressing naked, wearing tight. And they think, when it's time to marry, we don't look for ladies, we look for wives. If we need job, we'll look for ladies. If you need pleasure, you look for girls. But if it's marriage, you look for wives. Now, who is a wife? A girl has her powers in her body. A lady has her power in her mind. But a wife is one who submits to the ordinances of God. And so when Paul was talking here, he was not talking to girls. He was not talking to ladies. If you preach marriage in society today, people fight it. You know why? Because they are ladies. They are on Facebook. They are on YouTube. They are on the internet. So when you talk about submission, they carry acts and they start fighting you. They are not wives. Those who are wives know it's God's ordinance. They don't argue it. Paul say, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. So in case you are looking for a reference, he said the way you submit to Jesus, that's how you submit to your husband. So he gives you the reference. And he went further. In case you say it's a figure of speech, see what he says in verse 23. What I'm saying is not a figure of speech. He said, for as husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and the savior of the body. So he's telling the wife the role the church plays in her interaction with Jesus. That's the role the wife will play in her interaction with her husband. So 
because we don't challenge Jesus' authority, the wife has no right to challenge her husband's authority. Because we don't give Jesus direction, the wife has no right to give the husband direction. Her job is to suggest, to support, and to encourage. Because the church does not give direction to Jesus Christ. The church does not exercise authority over Jesus Christ. You go to the Western world today, they say, you are friends. Is the church the friend of Jesus? You can build friendship in marriage, but you are not friends. The Bible said the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is Lord of the church. He said that's how the husband is Lord of the church. You know, they think because this generation is dominated by Gen Z and Gen Alpha, when you are talking kingdom, they want you to modify it. The Bible says, have you received a kingdom that cannot be moved? The oracles of God can't change. No matter how the earth grows, the word of God will remain permanent. It is cast on iron. It says, wife, submit to your husband as the church is submitted to Jesus Christ. And so if you want to experience oneness, the key to oneness is submission. It's a spiritual formula. So if you want to study spiritual mathematics, Spirit Math 101 is wife, submit to your husband. If you like, call him honey. Peck him a thousand times. There's nothing you will do that will make this man continue to love you for 40 years unless as you submit to him. I know you people are getting married today. Your emotions are on the rampage. You'll be shocked. After six months, after one year, you will discover that even intimacy is responsibility. All these things that demons are whispering to you, hey, hey, when after a few months it will go down, you will be normal. You will discover that it's not kiss, peck, and hug that will keep his love for 40 years. The only thing that can keep him loving you for 40 years is submission. Because in 40 years' time, your face will not look like this. Even if you put a whole bottle of, uh, of powder, the face will be sacked. So what he will be looking at will not be your face. In 40 years' time, what he will be looking at is not your chest. In 40 years' time, what he's looking at is not your lap. It's your submission. That's why the Bible said, let the countenance of meekness. There's something on your inside that the older you grow, the brighter it becomes. Your face will fail you. Everything you are looking about, your physical feature, will fail you with age. Age will make sure of it. And the day will come, even powder will become a body. But the reason your husband will love you more and more 40 years later is because something sparkles from your inside. It's called submission. And the more you submit, the sweeter your relationship will become. It's a law of oneness in the spirit.